Welcome to Ridge Life, I'm Tim, and today we've got power. Let's do this. I am super excited to be showcasing today the Blue Eddy EB200P portable solar generator. This thing is a powerhouse, and we're gonna put it through some tests today. We're also gonna be using the SP120, the Blue Eddy 120 watt uh, solar panel, uh, to see if it can keep up and do the job. So let's see what's in the box. We have the 120 volt unit here. You can get this in multiple voltages for different locations and applications. Again, this is the EB200P. Now, Blue Eddy has packaged this up very securely and you definitely want a big unit like this arriving safely. So they did a good job there. Blue Eddy has the uh, user's manual warranty registration card right here on top. Make sure you register your Blue Eddy product for the warranty. Now, starting off, we've got the T500 500 watt AC power block. This is how you're going to charge your uh, EB200P via the wall power. And it charges very, very quickly at 500 watts. Now, looking at the accessories, this is where you have your XT90 connections straight into your EB200P. That's how you're gonna charge it up. And uh, lots of accessories in here, so they're very, very nice to give you all these. Starting off, we've got our uh, AC power cord. That's going to go into the T500 power block. Then we've got our uh, XT90 connection to MC4. This is the solar panel connection. So your solar panels are going to plug into our uh, MC4 connections and then the XT90 right into the front. Now we've got another XT90 connection. This is the car charging port. Uh, you can plug this into what used to be called a cigarette lighter port. No one has those anymore, but um, this is where you plug this in your car and you can charge your EB200P that way. Then, of course, we have the aviation multi-use um, uh, port, and this, again, is XT90 to the aviation connector. Now we've got to get this behemoth out of the box. This thing weighs about 62 pounds, so it is not a small, small unit, that's for sure. But it comes in a bag here, so let's pull the bag over, and I'll pull this out. Oh my goodness, the EB200P. Nice. Before we get into all the ways you can charge your EB200P, let's look at them, some of the ways you can charge from your EB200P. If we look at the front, we can turn the power button on, light turns green, touch screen lights up. We'll go over all the touch screen features here in just a little bit. But if we look at the front, we've got a 30 amp RV appliance power supply here, guys. This is 30 amp, 12 volts, plug in uh, large RV appliances there, charge it up all day long. Very, very, very nice. Looking over here at the 12 volt DC also, we've got a DC 5521 connection. Very, very nice, 10 amp. And then of course your uh, 12 volt, 10 amp cigarette lighter adapter. So all those um, compressors and little things you have that you know would plug into your car, you can plug them straight into here, and power them up. We have two USB-A 5 volt, 18 watt uh, outputs. Those are very, very handy for plugging in your uh, cell phones and all type of other USB devices. We've also got a USB-C. This is a 100 watt output. Very, very nice for charging your GoPros and all those things very, very quickly. Then we move on to our AC outputs. Guys, we've got six 2200 watt AC outputs. As you can see, they got the 2025 amp um, uh, little notches there. They are a grounded system, which is very, very nice. Six of these guys, 2200 watts at 1200, 120 volts. And again, guys, this thing can go for 2,048 watt hours. That is a long time for a portable power supply. Let's not forget our wireless charging outputs on the top. These are two 15 watt wireless charging ports. You just set your phone on top of it and it will charge up very, very quickly at 15 watts uh, capacity there. You get two of them going at the same time. Now let's explore our charging options. On this end of the EB200P, we've got two input ports. This one right here is your AC input port. That's where you're gonna plug in your T500 power block. Plug that right in there for 500 watts of charging. Then of course, you've got this DC input right here as well. Now this is where your uh, multifunction aviation uh, cable is gonna go. This is that one with a blue end on it. You plug this right in here. And this is going to let you plug in all kinds of things to the XT90. The XT90 is going to allow you to plug in your uh, cigarette charging cable. So you plug it into the car, charge up your EB200P. And then, of course, 
You've got your MC4 connections to XT90, and this is where your solar power uh, panels can go. Now you can plug in like three 200 watt solar panels in series, plug them in here and uh, charge this unit very, very quickly. You can also plug in your AC power block and have your solar panels going, or you can have the uh, car charger going. You can plug in a generator and then use the 120 to the power block. So you can charge this multiple different ways, guys. You can also use your EB200P while it's charging. So you've got your three solar panels connected up charging this and it is staying powered while you're using your loads. Amazing. Now we'll go through all the touchscreen setup and features. We'll also plug in a DC output, an AC output, and let you see what it looks like on the display. When you first turn on your system, you're gonna to come to the home screen. And the home screen has most of your basic information you'll need to monitor your power station. The top right, you've got your date and time. The very center, you've got your current battery status. The battery status is charged to 57%. On the top left is your DC input status. That's the how much wattage is coming in from your solar panel or your car charger. Top right is your AC, your grid input status. How many watts are you charging from the AC power side? Bottom left is your DC load. That's why I mean out output watts are going DC from your system. And then the bottom right is your AC load. That's how many watts going out your AC ports. Now on the bottom left and bottom right, you've got how to turn on and off your AC and DC system. So if I click on AC, turn on, now you can see right now we're charged, nothing's plugged in, so we are charging nothing, but there's your status. If we plug in something, you'll see a number there. Okay, let's turn that off. And if you click on any of the inputs, you can see the input voltage for the DC is zero, input power is zero, hit the back button. And the same thing for the AC load, you go inside of here, output voltage zero, output power zero, output frequency zero. So all of these are very, very basic and understandable. Uh, not much to decipher, guys. This is a very, very easy system to understand. Moving on to settings. From settings, we can see our language, our AC output voltage, AC output frequency, DC input source. Our buzzer setting is on. Eco mode, guys, eco mode. When eco mode is enabled, if your out AC output gets less than 50 watts for four hours, it will turn the AC output ports off. That will save your battery tremendously. Touch sound on, backlight brightness. You can adjust that very easily. Moving on, sleep time. This is for the display. I've got it set to never right now, so we can go through this tutorial. Uh, but you can set that to 30 seconds or whatever you want so that the uh, backlight uh, does not stay on and ruin your battery. So, and then you can set the date and time by, by clicking on any of the settings. Very, very easy, easy to do. If we click on data, we can get all kinds of information about our unit, product information here. Click on the uh, inverter and charger info, and that will give us PV car charge. This is the same settings as you get on the main home, home display, uh, just all in one location there, very, very easy. So there's all those settings, just like you would if you clicked on the individual one from the home. Um, if you click on battery information, we get a lot more information about our battery. Battery voltage, 52.4 volts. Battery SOC, 57%. That's a state of charge. And the battery state is on standby. We're not charging anything right now. And then our alarm history. Whoa, no alarms, but we can cycle through them if we ever have any. Speaking of alarms, we can click on alarm on the main homepage and go straight to the alarm page. There are no active alarms, but we can see those and clear them very easily from this page. Now let's look and see what the screen looks like when we're actually charging something. I've got my phone here. I've got it plugged into the uh, USB-A port. Let's turn on the DC output and let's see. There you go. You see the line saying it's, it's charging on DC output. And uh, it take a second and we'll start to see the output wattage. It's probably going to be very low, two, four, six. There you go. Two watts, four watts. We are charging my phone five watts, six watts because they go. So this could last a very, very, very long time at 2,048 watt hours, and I'm only doing six watts per hour. That's a long time to charge your phone. With our DC output on charging our phone, let's turn our AC output on. I've got a space heater plugged into that, and we'll see how many watts this space heater uses. Let me turn it on, and I'll turn it up to, oh my gosh, let's do 90 degrees and see how this thing starts to heat up in here. So here we go. I hear the heater kicking on 200, 300, 400, 500. 
560, 600, 600, okay, there you go, guys. So at 2,048 watt hours, and we're, char and we're using 700, 800 watts, you can do the math and know how long you could run this space heater when this unit is fully charged. But right now we're charging the phone and running a space heater, no problem, off our EB200P. Now let's check out how the uh, wireless charging ports work. I'll put my phone on the top there. And as soon as it registers, it is up there. It will start to immediately charge the phone. There we go. Two watts, just like we saw, four watts, just like we saw coming out of the uh, USB-A port. Now we're doing wireless charging. I can take it away and it immediately goes to zero watts. That is a pretty cool feature. Set your phone up there, walk away, and you are got charge. We're back to using our space heater, AC space heater with 720 watts output. Let's plug in the T500 power block into our AC input. Let's just get this plugged in right here. And this power block has a built-in fan, so it does make a little bit of noise, but it's going to turn on the AC input. Should come on right there, 458 watts uh, coming in. That's a 500 watt power block. So 460 watts coming in, 717 watts coming out. But guys, what if you plugged in solar panels or a car charger? You could have multiple inputs to this device and you can still keep your outputs on and your battery not get depleted. So you can see how this is very, very effective. You have your air conditioner and fans on in your camper, AC output, have your solar panels coming in on your PV uh, input, that's your uh, uh, DC input, and charge your solar panels are charging the unit and the unit is powering your air conditioner or your, your fans and staying on all day long. Love, love this system. Now for the real world test. We're gonna run every electrical component on this camper trailer from our EB200P. Can it do it? Let's find out. Just so you know, we disconnected our battery from our camper trailer. So anything you see powered up is from the Blue Eddy. Nothing to do with the battery. Our mid-size camper trailer here uh, has a 30 amp plug. That's, the, that's what you need to power all the electrical loads on this size camper trailer. Now the EB200P does not have a 30 amp receptacle. So what we have to do is have this 30 amp to 15 or 20 amp uh, adapter. So we plug this right in here and this will plug in the regular 2200 watt maximum uh, receptacle on our EB200P. And we'll see if it will power everything, okay? This is the test. What we've got to power in our camper trailer here, we've got a uh, water pump. We'll turn that on, try that. We've got a microwave. That's a pretty high power load. We've got a refrigerator, freezer, tons of lights throughout our camper trailer. Now we've installed LEDs, so they're pretty low wattage, but guys, we have got this air conditioner unit. This is the big, big elephant in the room. Can it, can it run this? This is the one that's going to be the big giant test. Of course, we got a TV there. Uh, we also have a um, natural gas heater system. So we have a blower in there that has to run. Now our water heater is natural gas and it has no blower or anything. So definitely nothing to worry about there. But guys, if you're camping, coffee. You gotta have coffee camping. So we're gonna make a pot of coffee. Well, we'll make a pot of hot water and see if the big old Blue Eddy can do the job. Let's turn the power on. There we go, Blue Eddy comes up. I believe we've got about 90%, 89% there. There we go. Now let's go ahead and plug in our camper trailer to our just an available receptacle there. There we are. Now let's turn the AC on. I hear it beep. All right, we've got no wattage going out. So everything is turned off on our camper. Now let's move over to our first load. All right, let's try to turn the water pump on. I hear the water pump running. Let's get some water going here. Okay, water is pumping out, getting ready to come through. All right, of course I haven't had, haven't had it on long guys, but we're putting some water in our, uh, coffee pot. We'll prep that for when we need to make us some coffee. Now let's go over and see what we've got going on with our wattage for our water pump. With the water pump running, we've got right at 70 watts, 68 to 70 watts. 
Now let's turn on our lights. Let's see, there's the outside light, inside light. I got all the other inside lights on. So now let's check and see what we've got on our Blue Eddy. And we are, it's like we're right at 70 watts again. Now let's turn the heater on. I hear the blower going, and really the blower is the only load on the uh, unit. The gas should kick on here in just a second, but with the blower running and the lights on, we are right at 124 watts. Gonna leave the lights on, because I need light for the camera here, guys. So there's about 70 watts, remember that. Gonna turn the TV on. LG, life is good, that is for sure. Now let's come back around, see what the uh, Blue Eddy is telling us our load is now. The TV is pulling about 100, now say we're about 94 watts. So 70 of it is the lights and just a 20 or so is the TV. Turn the TV back off so we can see our individual loads. And here's our refrigerator freezer. Let's go ahead and turn this unit on. All right, we got lights on in the refrigerator. No light on in the freezer. Well, I don't think they give you a light in the freezer. It's kind of weird. Um, but we have the power on. So now let's see what our Blue Eddy is pulling now. Ooh, guys, we got 420 watts. Again, 70 of it are the lights. So that refrigerator pulls a good amount. Refrigerator's off. Let's try the microwave. This should be a really big load. So start that bad boy. Let's see what we've got going on over here now. Oh boy. Whoa. 1,540 watts. 1,540 watts. Again, reminding you, this is a 2,200 watt uh, inverter. I believe it goes up to like, you know, 4,000 or so uh, peak, 4,300, 4,800. Um, but guys, we are running it. Microwave. Awesome. Now it's time for the most important test. Let's make us some coffee. Pour our water in there, and then we'll turn this big bad coffee maker on, and this isn't a giant one now. I don't expect it to be uh, super, super load, but let's go ahead and turn it on. Should start heating up and pushing the water down. Of course, we probably need to get our pot under there so we don't get water everywhere. Let's see what the unit is pulling. All right, here we go. We've got 660 watts. So about 600 watts for the coffee maker. Now for that elephant in the room, let's try the air conditioning unit. First, we're gonna start off with the blower. We'll put the blower on high, low, medium, high. Now let's move over and see what, what the air is doing for us. This is again, not, not the air compressor. All right, we've got 230 watts. Again, 70 of it's for the light. So 230 watts for just a blower. Now let's get the AC compressor on. Let's turn the air conditioner on low cool now. Let that stabilize for a second and then we'll turn the compressor on. We've got air, yay, we have air conditioning. Let's see what we're pulling here, okay? All right, we are pulling 1200 watts. So really, 1200 watts, that's not bad at all, guys. Wow, we got 2200 watts to deal with here and we got 1250 watts. How about we start turning things on until it trips? Let's turn on the TV. That'll give us a little bit. All right, TV is on. How about let's turn on the uh, refrigerator. This was a pretty big one when it first came on. TV and refrigerator. Let's see how close we are right now with all that going. Ooh, we're at 1,500 watts, 1,600, 1,700. That refrigerator is kicking on now. 1,790 watts, 1,790. Like I said, ooh, we are doing 1,800. All right, let's move on. Let's see what else we can get going on here. I know if I turn the, the uh, coffee maker on, it's definitely going to trip. Um, let's do, yeah, let's do the coffee maker. See what it's doing. I'm, I'm, oh my goodness, guys, 2,400 coffee maker. We are doing 2,400 watts. Can you all see that? 2,400 watts. That's pretty much everything, right? The blower on the uh, heater doesn't pull too much. We're definitely over our 2,200 watts though, but let's turn the blower on for the heater. Let's do that. Come on. Let's get that turned on. All right, the blower for the heater is on. 
Blower for the heaters on. We're at 25, 2500. We got almost everything. 2500 watts on a 2200 watt generator. Guys, let's turn on the microwave. With a coffee pot, I mean, everything's on. So one minute, it's got a trip. Let's hit start. There it goes. That was it, guys. It turned off. Let's see. Oh my goodness. We were consistently running this thing overloaded. So we go to the alarm screen. Input low voltage. Um, inverter low voltage. Okay, well, it tripped out. Um, let's clear that. That was an amazing test. We ran it overloaded. We ran everything electrical in the camper that you can run. Uh, if I missed something, leave me a comment down below. I'll run the test again. But that was truly amazing. Now, Blue Eddy does have a couple different lines of these uh, solar portable generators. There's the AC200P, which is just the smaller little brother to the... Uh, EB200P, uh, the AC200P is 2000 watts versus 2200 watts. The uh, EB200P can charge with three 300 watt solar panels, can charge 900 watts, where you're only like 500 watts on the AC200P. Now, if you go up to the AC200 Max, that's basically the Blue Eddy EB200P but they've added a 30 amp RV AC receptacle. So instead of having that adapter, you can plug it straight in there and you can also add in extend, extender battery packs. So instead of going from 2048 watt hours, you can go to over 6,000 watt hours and over 8,000 watt hours. That sounds like the better deal, right? It's a lot more expensive though. And of course you have to buy those extra battery packs. So for me, the EB200P, the right, the right product for the right application. It runs our camper trailer perfectly. I have really enjoyed working with the Blue Eddy EB200P. 2200 watts, 2048 watt hours, more than enough to keep our camper trailer camping comfortably. And that's important to us. Solar panels keeping us going, no gas, no generator, none of that loud, smelly stuff. Quiet solar energy renewable too that's awesome guys if if you want one of these for yourself i'll have a link in the description down below you can get all kinds of awesome discounts from blue eddy and just click on that link for more information i'd sure appreciate it if you like today's video give it a big old thumbs up i'd appreciate that as well and if you haven't subscribed to ridge life what are you waiting for it's free beekeeping and hunting and fishing product reviews how to's chickens rabbits barns tractors log homes we do all kinds of things here on ridge life hit that notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out. So guys, until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridge Life.